Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, before we get jump into the lesson today, uh, if y'all remember yesterday, y'all or not yesterday, Sunday wasn't yesterday. If you remember last week, we were talking about this video and about you know how the Holy Spirit can affect our lives and how God wants us and pulls us out of sin and He's there. Well, we have that video for y'all, and we're just going to play it. It's a short, about five-minute video. So enjoy. Here, God is continuing to build this world for, for us, for this young woman. You know, the, the flowers, the, the birds, the trees, the fruit, the rain. Everything is given to her. Water to drink. And the two are in communion. They're in fellowship with each other. Holding and dancing. But then here comes the distraction. It's the boyfriend. And he pushes God aside. He's getting in between. Each one adding a layer between her and God. Popularity. Beauties. Making her feel bad about herself. She's not good enough. Wearing the right clothes. Yeah. Just another layer between her and God. And here comes death. God in the background crying out.
sins are never easy battles, but God always gives me the strength to get through them. As long as stay focused on Him. She never gives up. And that's the thing. Now we're talking about you know how God wants this communion and he's given you you know everything he's given you this world to live in he, he's given you uh, the teachings of himself and then he gave you your, his son to show us how to live and to pull us back out of the darkness then he's he's also given us the Holy Spirit you know this this helper um, to, to continue on with us he's never he's never left us alone and this was just another powerful imagery this uh, to kind of point it out. But also, as we talk about today, as we talk about the, the personality and the deity of God, it's not hard for us to imagine the Father nor the Son as a person. You know, we can see the Father up there creating the world. We can see Him putting together, you know, us. You know, He's uh, walking with Adam and Eve. You know, there in the fiery bush with Moses. No, it's not, for some reason, the Father and the Son, they're not hard for us to picture as persons. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we tend to think of Him only as an influence. Because He doesn't, we don't think of Him as a person. Not like in the sense we think uh, as the Father or as the Son. We, and yes, He's not corporeal. You know, it's not arms and legs and a face. But too often we think he's, he's just an influence or he's just, a, just an extension of God's power, uh, an impersonal force. And, and when we have this, these thoughts, we start to ask ourselves, all right, you know, if we're walking away, and if he is just an impersonal force, if he is just an influence, we'll ask ourselves, well, how can I get more of the Holy Spirit? I've asked myself that a bunch of times. And that's the wrong way to go about it. That's going to put up barriers and walls. When we think of Him as a person, when we think of Him as a divine being, as how, who He is, we're going to ask ourselves, how can the Holy Spirit get more of me? And that's going to break down your walls. That's going to, you know, that's self-sacrifice, not self-exaltation. And that's where I want to point this out to you today. This is the... No, the who is the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? You know, debunking kind of the, this, these thoughts that He is just an influence. Because He is so much more than that. And the Bible points it out pretty clearly about His characteristics of the Spirit. If we go to the next slide. We see that the first one is He has a mind of His own. Romans 8, 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Now, does that sound like an impersonal force? Yeah. Does that sound like just an influence? No, he has a mind. And with this mind, he comes knowledge. Now, God has revealed these things to us by the Spirit, since the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thought except the Spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. He's been gifted knowledge. Knowledge of God. Knowledge of, of the beyond. 
He also possesses will. First uh, Corinthians twelve eleven, as a uh, uh, Paul was addressing the church and he, and all these uh, all, everybody was getting a different spirit. Some were given the gift or gifts. Some was given the gift to uh, prophesy. Some was given the gift of tongues. Some was given giving the gift of uh, interpretation of tongues. Some was given the gift of healing. We see healed that the one one and the same spirit is active in all these, distributing to each person as he wills. The spirit as he wills. So he has will of his own. He's been, been granted this will to act on his own, to distribute as he saw fit. Now lastly, we see another characteristic of the Holy Spirit that developed his personality is love of the Spirit. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, through our Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit to strive together with me in my prayers to God on my behalf. So we see here that the Spirit loves us. And that's, again, I'm building up. This is not an impersonal force. This is not just an influence. That He is a person. That He is real. Adding on layers to that, we see that His works alone demonstrate personality. The Holy Spirit speaks. We've got four accounts of it. 1 Timothy 4.1 now the Spirit expressly states that in latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceitful spirits and the teaching of demons. Acts 8, 29. And the Spirit said to Philip, Go over to that chair and stay by it. Acts 10, 19 through 20. As Peter continued to reflect on the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. So get up, go downstairs and accompany them without hesitation, because I have sent them. Acts 13. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work for which I have called them. So we see the Spirit speaks to us. Not just an influence. He is a person. He's got a personality. We need to view him as such. The Holy Spirit also teaches in John 14, 26. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I told you. Nehemiah 9.20 says, You gave your good spirit to instruct them. You did not withhold your manna from their mouths, but you gave them water for their thirst. In John 16, I still have much to tell you, but you cannot bear it yet. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truths. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak on what he hears. For he will declare to you what is to come. The Holy Spirit teaches. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. The Holy Spirit also forbids. In Acts 16, 6 through 7, after the Holy Spirit had prevented them from speaking the word in the province of Asia, they traveled through the, the region of Galatia. So we see that Paul was trying to go somewhere, but the Holy Spirit said no. The Holy Spirit also insists on our behalf. In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how we ought to pray, but the Holy Spirit, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. A little later on, down in Romans 8, we find, Who is there to condemn us? For Jesus Christ, who died, and more than that was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and He is interceding for us. So we see that Jesus and the Holy Spirit together are interceding for us in our prayers. Works that demonstrate personality. But not only does He have these works, the Holy Spirit also suffers. He can be grieved. In Ephesians 4, verse 30, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, in whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Isaiah 63.10 But they rebelled and aggrieved His Holy Spirit. So He turned and became their enemy. And He Himself fought against them. Now does that again sound like an impersonal force? Does that again sound like an influence? The Holy Spirit can be blasphemed. My dad pointed this one out to me. He said this is probably why most people don't preach on the Holy Spirit. They're too afraid of blasphemy. 
<laughs> Therefore I tell you, every sin and every blasphemy will be forgiven men. But the blasphemy against the, the Spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or the one to come. What he's talking about here is, are we denying the power of the Holy Spirit? Are we denying He even exists? He can be insulted in Hebrews 10. It looks like I forgot to write that one down. I guess I have to flip over it. Old fashioned way. Hebrews 10, 26. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we receive the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and the raging fire and the uh, consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of the two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son, the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as unholy thing in the blood of the covenant that sanctified him and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? We see the Holy Spirit can also be insulted. The Holy Spirit can be lied to. Ananias and Sapphira. Next 5. Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and withhold some of the proceeds from the land? And we saw what happened to them. They dropped dead on the spot for lying to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can also be resisted. When Stephen was up, was faced in court against the... Uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, he spoke, You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, do you always resist the Holy Spirit just as your, uh, as, just as your fathers did? So we see that we too can resist His power. We too can resist this influence on us. Not that it is an influence, but it's trying to pull us back. We can resist that it is a person, that it is trying to have this relationship with us. We see that all these characteristics, all these works, identify him as a person. So then, how does he fit? Is he a supreme being? Is he divine? Is he part of the Godhead 3? Is he like an angel? Is he part of the archangels? Who is he? We see that he's omnipotent. He knows all things. 1 Corinthians 2, 10-11 But God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For whom among men knows the thoughts of man except his own spirit? So too, so too no one knows the thoughts except the, the Spirit of God. So we, He knows all things, just as God knows all things. Therefore, He is divine. He's omnipresent. Psalm 139, 7 through 10. Where can I go to escape your Spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in, in Shiloh, you are there. Or in Hades, with uh, my translation had. If I rise in the wings of the dawn, if I settle by the farthest sea, even though your hand will guide me, your right hand hold me fast. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. Hebrews 9.14 will tell us that he's an eternal spirit. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, purify your conscience from works of death so that you may serve the living God? We see that uh, the Holy Spirit was there also in the creation of the world. Genesis 2, the spirit, uh, now, the, now the earth was formless and void. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And Job... The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Not only was He part of the creation of the world in the beginning, He also was there in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, in the working of the miracles. Jesus would say in Matthew 12, But I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. It was the Spirit. He drives these out with the Spirit. Romans 15, 
by the power of signs and wonders and by the power of the Spirit of God. So from Jerusalem all the way to like, like uh, Rikium. I probably said that wrong. I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. By the power of the Spirit, there were, he was, uh, Paul was able to perform miracles. He's also there in the redemption of man. In Hebrews 9, 14. He's also there in the regeneration of man. In John 3, and also in Titus 3. Right there with God. Right there with, with the Father pulling us back from, like we saw on that video. With Jesus going to the cross. All three are in our redemption. Acts 2.38. We are baptized into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we, uh, and every time we're baptized, uh, this was brought up when I was uh, studying underneath uh, Charles Spurgeon in one of his sermons about the deity and the personality of the Holy Spirit. He says, he points out, when you're going down to the baptism, who were you baptized in? You're baptized into the name, singular, the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Trinity, as we would say. And I've been pointing these out because in my research I found there are a lot of views about the Holy Spirit. There are a lot of views that differ from the Trinity, from believing in the Godhead three. You have some that like to believe that there are three separate gods. That there is the Father, He's separate. There's the Son, He's separate. There's the Holy Spirit, He's separate. But we know that's wrong. De Deuteronomy, those practicing the Jewish faith wake up every morning they say, Our Lord God is one God. One God. We're baptized into one name. We see that some people will believe that that the Son and the Holy Spirit are technically gods. There, there's only one, there's just the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit underneath them. They're, they're what they would call archangels, like Michael. We know that's wrong. Um, but we see that we're baptized into their names. And then uh, further along it says there's a, a whole host of archangels, not just the two. And the last one that I came across was that there's one God and he came into three forms, but you can only have, you can only be here in one of those other forms. He's either God the Father, or He's God the Son, or He's God the Holy Spirit. Again, we know that's wrong. For we saw in, in, in Luke, during Jesus' baptism, that Jesus was there in the water. We saw the, the heavens open up and the dove, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, descended upon Him. We also see that a voice spoke out saying, This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. So the only option that we come across is that this, this Trinity, that we have this Godhead three, that the Holy Spirit is a person, a part of this Godhead three. And when we, when we have Him in this life, when we, uh, the Bible presents us to this Holy Spirit as, a, as personal, manifest, manifest about His characteristic and His works and His sufferings, I want us to point out, because I struggle with this. Like, I didn't know how to present this to y'all. How to make y'all understand the Godhead three. How to get y'all to understand this divine nature of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as separate individuals, but yet together as one God who we worship. But we, we read in Psalm 139, verse 6. Uh, David would be writing, and David's talking about how we are made, and your hand was upon me. He made me. You sewed me together. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, and too lofty for me to obtain. So as I was putting this together, I was worried. I, I didn't know how to bring about this God had three without, you know, Showing y'all more to one of the other thoughts. Maybe he's not just, maybe it is actually three gods. Well, we know that's wrong because there's only one God. Our God is a jealous God. He would have no other gods before him. He's only one God. You know, well, what about, you know, the other ones? They, they, there's light in the scriptures about it, you know. Uh, we read one in 1 Corinthians. Uh, 
who knows a man but his own spirit the same way the spirit of God knows God because he's within him you know so then that kind of points out well maybe he is just an influence and a power but we know that's wrong again because he speaks and he talks and he and he he told all these other characteristics he was he forbids you know you can have slights against the Holy Spirit so this is one of those reasons why this topic is always kind of overshadowed it's hard to grasp but the thing about it is you don't have to understand God because the moment you understand God he's no longer God he stops becoming God when we can understand him he's too lofty he's too far above us we can't put him in a box in, in our minds we can't understand eternity we can't understand how he created the heavens we can't understand how the, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one yet separate. All we have to do is have faith. We believe in it. We're baptized into it. And one day when we get to heaven, we'll, we'll see it. We'll understand it then. Amen. But right now, it's, it's, not our, it's not our duty to understand the Godhead 3. It's not our duty to try to define this trinity. So, as we go through this, and uh, well, our next topics will be the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need to think. We need to realize that He is a person. We need to, we need to shine our light upon our lives. You know, how can I get this Holy Spirit within me? What do I have to do? What sacrifices do I have to make in my life that I, so I can let Him in? You know, how can the Holy Spirit get more of me in my life? You know, how can He take over my life? And you know, we're baptized into the Holy Spirit. We're given this gift of the Holy Spirit there. And if any one of y'all has more, want to study more on this topic about the Holy Spirit and His realm, please come talk to me afterwards. There's a, there's a lot of different areas we can go to, uh, sources we can go to discuss the Holy Spirit, His deity, and His personality, um, how He is an actual person. Also, there's uh, we saw the video that you know we struggle with sin in this day-to-day -day life we know that we put on this armor of god to fight the to, to fight the battles and our armor gets deemed up and we get tired so if there's if y'all have anything that needs to come forward to say if there's something weighs heavy on your heart you're ready to put on christ in baptism to put on the father the son and the holy spirit on baptism please come up you know our call somehow if you're out there on the on the video don't let COVID stop you from being baptized Amen. we're not given tomorrow we're not given uh, till this is over and then you know, we can get back to our daily basis so don't wait there's no time to wait Amen. take action